everyone, welcome back to another MotoCab adventure video. Today I am renting this Africa Twin. I am renting it from W Motorcycle Rentals uh, in the city. I know the owner, Wolfgang, he's a very nice old uh, German dude. Uh, I used to sell parts to him when I was working at BMW Motorcycles in San Francisco. Really nice guy. I suggest you go there if you want to go rent a bike. Uh, they take care of you. They're pretty cool. So, uh, immediate first impressions on this thing. I've, I've had this for not even a half hour yet. Uh, seating position, very different. I'm not used to it. It's, it feels, it feels like what, uh, maybe like a smaller GS would be, like a 1200 feet. Like it's, you feel like you're, you're seating, you're sitting inside of a cockpit still. You're not on top of it like a KTM or something. Um, so you feel very, very much inside a cockpit, but uh, handlebars are pretty tall. Um, I don't know that I would need to put risers on this, assuming this doesn't have risers. I don't think it does. Uh, suspension. Obviously coming from a GS with the tow lever front end uh, that prevents diving. Here's the golden gate. Uh, prevents diving in like a hard brake scenario. So like if you really pull on that front brake, it, it doesn't want to dive as much as like a traditional or a inverted fork like this would. Um, so I'm noticing that, I'm obviously just noticing that when I'm coming to a stop. Uh, on the topic of stopping brakes, I can immediately tell that the Brembo brakes on the BMW are going to be better. Like they're just, there's, uh, these aren't, these aren't terrible. I've, I've felt much worse brakes before, but they feel way more mushy and, and not as grabby as the, the BMW ones do. Um, I don't know if they're running centered pads on these, uh, on these brakes or whatever, but, so I don't, I couldn't really tell you if uh, you could change that out. Uh, in terms of seating position again, definitely made for smaller people. I don't feel like I'm on like a big GS, like I can kind of stretch out my legs and everything. Um, it feels more reminiscent of my F650 in that sense, but it's not terrible. It's definitely a lot better than the F650 was. Uh, so I'm not gonna say that, I'm not gonna say that the seating position on this is terrible just yet. I need to, I need to ride the full day and I'll tell you at the end of this review. Thoughts on power delivery. Uh, so the parallel twin 1000cc or 998cc engine in this thing, it's no slouch, but I don't feel like, I, it, it doesn't just, it doesn't have that BMW grab when you like really take off, uh, it just feels a little more sloppy. I mean it just feels more reminiscent of a F800 GS, which is kind of what it's more similar to in power wise, uh, power delivery wise, so. It's not terrible though, it's it's more than enough power, it's ample power, I don't feel bored on it, I'm not, uh, I mean maybe on the highway, these higher speeds you'll definitely notice the difference going from 70 to like, let's try to go to 80. So yeah, it took a little bit of time, but not, not terrible. Um, if, if, it feels, in terms of speed, it feels like my R1150 did, which isn't terrible, it's more than enough for me. In fact, I think honestly having the power of the GS can sometimes get me in trouble if I'm not careful. Alright, so we'll go from a 15 mile per hour rolling start here just to get some speed. Traction control kicks in pretty easily. I have it on the second setting. Uh, so we got up to 60 there. I have it on the second setting and uh, it's still kicking in pretty easily. First real corner on this thing. So that's one thing I immediately noticed getting in this bike too is that uh, 21 inch front wheel. The, the GS has a 19 inch front wheel and uh, while not the best for off-road, it definitely makes it a lot easier to swing that bike around and uh, get around the corners easily. This 21 inch, I mean, I, I've ridden an F800. Uh, it's kind of similar. It's, it just, you feel like you gotta push like a little more into it and um, I don't know. It's not too big of a deal. I'm, I'm still having fun in these twisties here. The 21 inch front wheel is really meant for off-road of course. And that's what this bike is 
really meant for. So, you know, to compare it to a GS and the Twisties isn't really appropriate. Uh, so standing up. So with the, the handlebars sitting pretty high, uh, I feel very comfortable. This feels very natural to me. Um, it doesn't feel as wide as a GS, but uh, in, the, in terms of like the handlebars, but it probably is. So I can't imagine it would be that different. Um, I think just because the GS I'm riding on, even with the handlebar risers, feels a little bit lower. Uh, it's it feels different enough to be noteworthy but yeah i could stand up totally with my arms like legs completely straight which you're not supposed to do all right so we're about to hit this uh notorious decreasing turn here going up mount tam here so let's let this car go a little further all right see if i can hit this easily with a 21 inch front yeah it felt awkward but i did it okay i let a little bit of traffic go by Get on it in the twisties. All right, it's a little wet up here, so I'm not gonna push it too hard. Uh, it's a really foggy day in Mount Tam. Maybe most days are like this, honestly. I mean, that engine does come to life. It's You just gotta give it a little bit of revs. What's interesting is that it uh, actually redlines around like eight grand RPM. So it's not that dissimilar to a GS in terms of uh, how much you're revving it. Um, power delivery is a little different. I feel like if you really just roll on this, you're not, you're not uh, coming off the throttle too much. It's, it's very smooth. Tell you what though, I'm so used to those BMW brakes that uh, coming up on these corners feels a little unnatural. Well, I'm sort of waiting here. Uh, in terms of the weight, this thing definitely feels a lot lighter. I wouldn't say a lot. It feels definitely lighter than the GS. I, I, I feel like moving this thing around, uh, if, I, if I have to move this in and out of my parking spot, which is really cramped and kind of a pain in the ass, honestly, with the GS, um, is this would be a lot easier to move around, and that's that's a definitely one consideration. Oh yeah, the suspension's very very soft. <laughs> uh, this then this particular model has twenty thousand miles on it, um, so I'm sure everything's a little worn in. Uh, I don't have preload or anything set specifically to me. You can do all that. Um, it's very uh, similar to dirt bike-ish stuff. One of the guys at the rental place, he's going over the bike with me and he's like, yeah, this thing's just gonna feel like a big dirt bike. Um, I wouldn't say it does in the truest sense. I feel like a KTM probably resembles that the most. However, suspension-wise, I mean, this thing's working great. Uh, I just feel like I gotta get it off-road to really feel it. I'm gonna do some very, very, very light off-road. Uh, literally just like a dirt parking lot. Um, if it's even still open, just to get a, a feel for it. Because that's really where this bike shines and it's not, it, it wouldn't do it a justice if I just rode around in the twisties and said, oh yeah, the GS feels better, you know? It's not what it's designed to do. Yeah, I'm having no, no problem getting this thing around the corners that I'm getting a little more used to it. I definitely put in a little more uh, body language, really lean. Hey, it's actually nice out here. Hey, it opened up. <laughs> oh, it might be a nice day. Yeah, so I mean, I, I definitely feel like I'm, I may be putting a little more body language into it because it's a lighter bike and I can do it. I'm not just pushing a big lever like the GS. But it feels more like an actual motorcycle and uh, everything about it, you know, it just it just feels more traditional, more simplistic. And I, I kind of really like that. Uh, I'm not sure. There are a lot of things that I really do like about the GS in terms of uh, technology, like uh, dynamic ESA, like on the brand new bikes, if you're getting one of those and you have dynamic ESA and it's like actively working and it, you know, that shit's great. It's, it's awesome. Um, 
but there's something to be said about having a an option for a very uh, simple bike. Um, something that you can work on yourself still easily. You don't have to hook it up to a computer. Um, you don't have to pay the, the BMW mechanics a ton of money. Because honestly, that's that's where BMW gets you. It's not so much in the initial cost, but the, the maintenance. With that said, while we're on kind of uh, pricing, I guess, um, the BMW will hold its value a lot better. Uh, I've seen these with 20,000 miles for eight grand, uh, 2016 model, two years old. And it, you know, it starts at uh, 13,000 MSRP. It definitely loses value quickly. I think with the adventure sports model just coming out, that might not be helping the standard Africa twin out too much. Um, I don't know. So, I mean, overall cost of ownership, you might not be that far off from a GS if you own a GS and you sell it, you know, after a couple years and you're not putting a bunch of miles on it. It's assuming you're not crashing it like me. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, let's just stop and take a quick look at this. Uh, go around everything. I feel like that's kind of important. While I'm here, I can flap with this bike. Uh, I cannot say that about the GS, even if the low seat, like if I put the seat in the low position, I don't know that this has a low seat position um, or if it's got any different positions. So we'll assume that it doesn't for now because yeah, I think BMW just has so many little options here and there. This is a beautiful looking bike. I'm not going to lie. I, I really like the look of it. Some people don't. Um, I've seen it with the uh, people remove this fender and they have like the big dirt bike looking one. That thing looks sweet. I don't know. But I just like it. I like the, the gold wheels with everything. It looks great. Um, I think BMW tried to uh, almost copy this this look with that F800 or F850 GS coming out. Um, I mean, guys, this thing, I, I'm liking it so far. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not, like, crazy impressed with it. Um, but it's meeting my expectations of what I, I thought it might be. Uh, so I'm not I'm not having any issues with it. Um, this is obviously not the DCT model. I am really glad I did not get the DCT model for rental. They don't have one at at uh, W, and I'm really glad they don't. I I want to ride a motorcycle. I don't want to ride a big scooter. I know a lot of people are like ah you know I didn't like it and then like I got on it and I then I enjoyed it. I just I can't see myself ever wanting to ride a DCT model. Um, but it's there if you want one. Whatever. Uh, this has the GV cases on the. the these are, these are garbage. On it. <laughs> these, these little plastic pieces of shit. <laughs> They're really bad. Uh, they don't compare at all to the the Tortec, uh metal cases that uh, my brother's got on his bike and the BMW boxes that you can get uh, standard from the factory. I don't know what the factory luggage is for this. I don't know if there even is any. Um, it's kind of got uh, some like hooks here for what looks like uh, factory luggage. Uh, the GV cases, obviously, they have a rack um, that they put on it for it. Uh, and also this this awful looking uh, top case thing for that fucking Hyundai <laughs> looking uh, top case. I hate those top cases. They're, they're so awful. Uh, seat is actually pretty nice. It's it's pretty comfortable. It's it's kind of soft. It's not great. Um, it, it almost looks like a little bit of like a pleather thing going on here, which isn't ideal. Uh, I, I just, I can't imagine this bike holding up for as long as a BMW would in terms of uh, mileage. Um, I've only seen bikes with, you know, I mean, I saw one review with uh, a guy had 50,000 miles on his bike and he had no real issues, which is great. I mean, it's a Honda. I, I think it will last pretty long. Um, I just, I'm a little concerned because I don't know if these engines have been proven, uh, for longevity. Um, with that said, I mean, if you look at like the new water-cooled boxes, when those 2013 models came out, uh, they were eating their cam lobes somehow. Um, it, the, these engines, I don't know of at least of any particular issue, uh, that's happened with it. So I, I think so far it's been, it's been pretty good. Um. I can definitely hear this chain. That's <laughs> I'm always riding a bike with a shaft drive. Uh, whatever. I mean, that's not a big deal. You got your preload adjustment here for the rear. Um, I'm not going to mess around with that right now. 
Uh, these are all GV upper and lower crash bars. Uh, people actually really like these. I can see why. They kind of mount up together and make one big uniform thing. Um, stock skid plate, not so good. Uh, needs to come up a little bit, cover this, uh, the headers a little bit. These headers are actually kind of tiny compared to uh, the 1200 GS. Um, these freaking pegs, man, I don't, I don't like those at all. Luckily, you can change them for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks or something. You get a pair of... Uh, what is it, the uh, 600cc uh, dual sport Honda. They they switch right out. They're the same mounts and everything, so that's not a big deal. They, they kind of have a rubber uh, thing to dampen um, vibration, and then when you stand on it, it kind of grabs on these little uh, uh, nub things and... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Standing up on it, they don't they don't feel wide enough. I, I really like the wider foot pegs um, of like a GSA. Yeah, so uh, brakes. These are Nissan brakes. It's pretty standard for a lot of um, a lot of Hondas, and uh, these rotors are big enough. I think. That, I mean, they're they're grabbing fine. They're you just. I think you just gotta grab a little more brake than I'm used to. Um, it's it, yeah. I don't know. It, the feel of this bike is just. It's much more soft and not as grabby and. Um, Especially, obviously, the, the wet clutch is going to feel a lot different. Uh, the clutch is operated by a cable still, so you don't have a hydraulic clutch like uh, the GS. Um, probably a good thing if you're doing some serious off-road out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, you, you know you can't really fix a hydraulic clutch easily, but you can carry an extra cable um, if the cable snaps. So no, no issues with that. I these the the clutch. I'm actually finding that. I'm really uh, naturally shifting. I, I haven't had any issues shifting with this bike. Sometimes when I hop on a F800 GS or something, um, I find that I'm uh, I'm actually gassing it too early or something uh, between each shift, and uh, I'm always like, and I'm like I'm, I'm, I don't know, if something's really going on there that I, I can't figure out. This I, I hop on and I can just ride, uh, no shoe. Um, so you can change your. Uh, your different um, traction control settings. It's almost like where you would expect like the high beam to be on some bikes. Uh, so if I touch that, you're gonna see it brings it down. I'm gonna put it down to one. I've had it on two so far. Two is even intervening a little too much for me. Um, I know the Adventure Sports model, they add more settings, Pfft, whatever. I, I'm only gonna, I, I don't want that many settings, honestly. I just want uh, a couple of them, uh, you know, for when it's rainy and for when it's super dry and I wanna just, mess around on uh your abs buttons right here super out in the open they kind of have these other extra buttons for i don't know afterburners turbo whatever um they they route these cables in a really not so great way that kind of gets in the way of the of the dash uh the dash is very easy to read it's very reminiscent of like a uh, honda civic actually um with your uh readout in uh digital form uh you don't have a big uh dials or anything and I, I, I like this. It's it's very simple, and it's uh, there, it's not a distraction. I want to ride a bike, not look at uh, not look at my screen. With that said, I, I really like those uh, TFT displays on the new GSs and the KTM's, and I'm not gonna lie, those look great. But whatever, I don't really need it. I just I just want to ride a bike, man. Oh yeah. I don't know. I, man, this isn't bad. I just really, like, it's something about it. It just feels welcoming. I kind of miss the, you know, I, I tell people I miss my F650 sometimes and they stare at me like I have four eyes. And I understand why. I mean, it's, that's not a good bike, honestly. It's good for a starter, but it's, it's really not that great. Um, but there are parts that, all the good parts of that bike, uh, I'm feeling on this bike in terms of its lighter weight. Um, it's just ease of operation. Like everything just feels nice. I don't know. It, it's pleasant. Whatever tires he's got on this bike, uh, I'll take a look. I think they're Conti Trail Attack 2s. They're, they're great. I actually really like these. Um, 
I'm sure once I hit dirt, it's probably different. So yeah, I'll, I'll uh, keep it in the, I'll actually bring it up a gear, kind of show you the low end torque going on. So, I mean, it takes a little bit to get up to speed. It's not a GS. I mean, I could put the GS in fifth gear here, just like, burp, 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 and like, it'll still, you know, tractor you along. This still does have a little bit of a tractor feel to it. Um, it's not gonna be hard to ride. If you uh, don't shift down enough before a turn, you'll figure it out. You know, you can gas through it. All right, so we're at the top of Mount Tam. And definitely got a view of clouds. It's actually really cool. I like the more traditional uh, kill switch, which is just forward kill. Um, that's also your start button. I don't like the BMW ones. Uh, as much as I've had BMWs, I've always just been turning off the key. Um, it's This is just easier to activate. It's more intuitive. <laughs> just throw it in even though I'm not staying here very long. All right, against all better judgment, I'm about to try something. Whoa, that felt like nothing. <laughs> oh my God. The, uh, I know the KTM suspension is going to be better, so don't don't get in the comments and be like, oh, that you, you, you KTM, bro. You know, I don't I don't care. I know that the KTM is better. It's better off road. It's better uh, performance wise. It's a worse road bike. I can tell you that. I I know. I know. Like, it's just a more expensive bike, though. It's more expensive to maintain. It's just like a BMW. It's going to be a little more finicky and. You need to stay on it. This is a Honda, man. You just you just put gas in it, you change the oil, you lube the chain, and you go ride. That's really the, the biggest appeal to this bike, to me, is just like the simplicity. I don't, I don't like the idea of a final drive failing on me in the middle of the woods, even though I've been riding final drives forever. And you know, you can usually tell a final drive is about to fail uh, be, well before it's happening. So that's not really, it's, it's kind of a mood argument. Uh, but it's just another thing you gotta worry about. You know, the, the chain goes, you just replace the chain, you put the new sprockets on, you can change the gearing if you want. You know, it's it's more traditional biking, man. It's just what, what it should be, I feel like. I'll tell you what, that uh, turn signal I'm not used to. I love those paddles on that BMW. It's the one thing I don't want to get rid of. Yeah, I mean, man, that just, the suspension just soaks it up. I mean, it's definitely meant for, go over a little bit of rocks here, definitely meant for off-road. I could definitely feel that this bike will shine off-road compared to a GS. Uh, I, I hate to keep making those comparisons, but that's, you know, that's really what it is. Like, for me, it's all I have to compare it to. I mean, yeah, you can just, like, it's, it's pretty soft. I know if I was to load this up, uh, I'd probably have a lot of issue with, um, the rear suspension not being stiff enough. Take a look at these tires, man, because they're not they're not terrible. Trail attack too. <laughs> okay, I wasn't wrong. Yeah, I mean these these are uh, wow. I mean they really don't look like they should grab anything. Um, I'm not in mud or anything. This is literally just ha like a hard packed parking lot. So I'm not going to say that they're great, but I mean on the road, man, those things feel good. I'm not going to turn off the ABS, but yeah, that's I think you just hold the ABS button even when it's on. No traction control, let's see. Yeah, so I mean, obviously that works. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an easy to handle bike. It's not, I, I'd have to get used to it a little bit. I'm more used to the GS, of course. All right, let's put traction control back on. That's what I just hold it, yep, and it goes back on, easy. I mean, it revs right up, no problem. Let's talk a little bit about that noise, though. The, uh... You hear that, like, whistle? Not a fan of that, but I'm sure I could change that. Not a big deal. Okay, we're gonna try to stop from 50 miles per hour. Ready, go. All right, I wasn't really pushing on it because I, I felt the EVS kicking on. Uh, it certainly dives. It certainly got that feature. Um, not ideal, I won't lie, it's not great. That BMW, man, you can just stop on a dime. I love that. I wonder if you can just change out the pads in this, maybe, I don't know, but these, these calipers aren't ideal, I don't think. 
I love this area, but uh, see how wet the road is here? I mean, man, it's just, it's sketchy. You can, I've, I've two wheels slid on this road before. Uh, I mean, it's just, you get pine needles on the ground and stuff, and it's just not, I don't know, it's sketchy. Really wet all the time, really foggy, but I mean, it is beautiful. What's up? Hike? Yeah. Uh, not sure. Do you know, you know where this goes, right? No. Okay, so this, this kind of heads more to the top of Mount Tam. Um, We're looking for the waterfall. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done enough hiking here to know, honestly. So you can go straight and that goes all the way to the top and you go right and that kind of brings you down uh, towards Mill Valley. Um, but kind of a, a while down that way, but uh, there's definitely like plenty of different little spots to hike off of down this way. I'm not really sure. I have no idea where that waterfall might be. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I wish I could be better health. <laughs> Yeah, I don't don't uh, hike this area very much. I wish I did. So yeah, you can you can definitely start to feel uh, the soft suspension isn't isn't set up for the road. You don't feel the road underneath you as much. Um, whereas like the BMW, you can you can uh, turn on that you know sport mode on the ESA, and it stiffens up the the suspension dampening and. Um, you, know, you start to feel it a lot, but this, I, I feel like I definitely am riding a lot slower, which is probably a good thing. I mean, honestly, I, I do need to ride slower sometimes. Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe it's for the boots I'm wearing, but I feel like I don't have to throw that lever as far as the GS transmission uh, expects you to. I know I can change that, that position of that gear lever. Um, I just... Man, I, even with all my miles underneath that GS, and I know this is pretty much just my problem, so don't take it for, uh, don't, don't take it as a talking point really, but I mean, it's just, I, I always, I always hit neutral. I always hit neutral like in the, in the city and it's just annoying, man. You can go about 35 in first gear. Not bad. It's. A uh, gearing, I mean, it, it's got enough torque for the off-road, so I don't think the gearing needs to change much. I know some people do change it. Uh, I, I bet you I just have to do off-road on this bike to really, really understand why people are doing that. Uh, fit and finish of this bike are okay. It's, it's better than I feel like a lot of Japanese bikes. I feel like Honda's a little more on the higher end of the spectrum for Japanese bikes. Man, I hit that neutral again. I don't know. It's, it's, it's totally my fault. Um, I mean, you can kind of tell, like, down here, it's like, uh, it looks unfinished. Um, however, it's probably very easy to change out those headlights, I bet, because <laughs> you can really get, fit your hand in there. Uh, steering lock. I just realized as I was looking down there that we need to talk about that steering lock. Let's, uh, let's find a spot to stop really quick. All right, let's just stop right here. That's a, that's a tight steering lock. Um, Similar to GS. That's, that's all I got for you. <laughs> all right, here comes the roller coaster turn. Not a big deal. 21 inch front wheel is totally fine. All right, turn traction control off. Not all the way off, actually, just in that first. Man, that was 90. Ah. I mean, it's, it is what it is. It's not the best. It's It's got the power though, it's all there. I'm not complaining. I have fun on it, that's all that matters. Oh my God, a water crossing, oh my God. All right, so we got a little bit of sand here. I am not going to try to go through this quickly. Yep, because it already wants to just gonna waddle my way through this. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to drop someone else's bike. A rental bike especially. It's gonna cost you a lot of money if I do that. So I just rolled through Gurneyville, uh, rode up through Jenner, got gas there, 
There was about a bar left on the uh, fuel gauge and it took 3.6 gallons, 3.6 and change. Um, so I have to annotate how big the gas tank in, is on this. I believe it's like probably like a full gallon bigger, I feel like. Um, so I think my range was probably pretty, uh, I, I think I had a lot more range to it. Right now I'm only at 147 miles. I need to get on the highway and just blast back to San Francisco to get this back in time. Uh, so we'll see what that experience is like on the highway. Uh, the, the real highway burn. <laughs> the, the thing that the GS excels at the most. Uh, we'll see how this thing does though. So far I've been very happy with it. It just feels like a big dual sport bike. Uh, it sounds kind of like one too. It sounds like you put two dual sport cylinders side by side and you just put it on a bike and go <laughs> i don't know it's the best way to describe it uh at the moment all right let's try to do a u-turn here and simple no issues there all right so we're on 101 uh i've only been on the highway for like 10 minutes but totally fine at uh the higher speeds with you know being in sixth gear i Plenty of power still to get around. I uh, can sustain 80, fine. No issues there. I'm really happy with this on the highway so far. I was expecting a lot worse. I will say that the windscreen is not ideal. Uh, it kind of puts everything right at uh, my face shield level in terms of wind, so. I do think that that could be better. A lot of bikes, you end up getting aftermarket screen, uh, screens anyway. I'd probably end up getting something shorter, believe it or not, uh, so that I have full ventilation to that helmet. I've been rocking that shorter windscreen on my brother's bike, and I really kind of appreciate it a lot more than uh, the tall windscreen I used to have on the GSA. The reason being is I actually feel like I'm riding a motorcycle. <laughs> That GSA windscreen is just so big, and uh, with the wing, like the winglets on the side and everything, it um, it works so well that I just I, my one my vents never work, so I had to stand up to vent out. And you know, if I'm in you know 90 degree weather or higher, uh, pretty much standing the entire time. Uh, so the those shorter windscreens better for that. Um, and yeah, I mean my vents work on my helmet with the shorter windscreen. If they're working with this one right now, uh, I kind of close the vents uh, where the microphone sits. So the chin and visor vent on this helmet are closed right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I would totally ride cross country with this. I did it on the 650. I'd have no problem doing it this. So the GB crash bars uh, provide a actually decent highway peg. <laughs> I uh, just put my heels on them and just kind of relax. Uh, however, the standard R1200 GS with the uh, all-rider crash bars, I can do pretty much the same thing I'm doing now uh, with even a little more space to kind of stretch out. So in terms of lane splitting, it's, it's not too different from a GS uh, in terms of width. It's definitely a little more narrow. Um, it's a little easier to lane split, I think. On the GS, it's it's less your your engine and more just your handlebar width that's a concern. But I can sneak by all this, not too bad. So I guess I'll give you a, sort of a conclusion of the uh, whole experience. Um, you just heard lane splitting, not bad, not a big deal. Uh, windscreen, meh, needs di something different. Uh, just it, it keeps putting, it puts air right in your face. Mirrors. Totally fine. We never change them. These bark buster things, a little flimsy. I'd probably change those out to actual bark busters. Um, lights. We got uh, two LEDs. People are noticing me. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, traction control. Definitely, like on the highest setting, it's a little too much uh, intervention. Uh, I try to keep it on the middle bar here, the, the second one and it's totally fine. Uh, when it does intervene, it's a little like chug, 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 like it kind of chugs a little bit and it, uh, 
it's not a pleasant sound um, or experience. I feel like the, the BMW did a little bit better of a job in that, te in, in that sense on my uh, GSA that had it. Um, but again, I mean, you shouldn't really, like it, it does what it's supposed to do and you shouldn't really be uh, causing that traction control to go off. Um, so, I mean, I, I'll, I'll just keep it in a middle setting. Uh, I didn't turn ABS off. Uh, on, the, on the topic of brakes, eh, could definitely use better brakes. Not a huge fan. Uh, they're okay. They're okay. I, I wouldn't uh, avoid buying the bike because of that. You just gotta be a little more careful, that's all. The, the whole menu setting for this, it's pretty simple. You just got these selector switch thing here. You've got a little set button, you press the set button, uh, you switch between those those uh, three different things here, and it's, once you, once you realize how to do it, it's very straightforward, it's not a big deal. Now that I've done 212 miles, uh, seat's fine, and I think it could be a little taller uh, for me. I would probably change it out for that reason alone, uh, because the seat to peg distance is a lot uh feels a lot smaller than the gs so my legs are a little more cramped up um but the seat overall it's not terrible not the best i find that you can kind of slide forward and back on it uh if you slide all the way back uh until you start to hit the passenger part it kind of curves up and supports the your butt and uh gets you in kind of a position to relieve your lower back a little bit. Uh, I definitely feel it a little more lower back pain on this than if I was riding 200 miles on a GS, but um, again, I'm just not totally used to this one, and it probably could use a different seat. A lot of people run different seats on the GS anyway. Uh, seat is very much a personal thing. Uh, fit and finish. It's okay. I. You know, uh, we'll leave this thing here for a button that was supposed to be, I don't know, it's just, it, it's very open, uh, and things are, things are okay, they're not rattling, uh, but they're definitely not BMW quality, so whatever. Let's see, suspension, soft, great for off-road probably, uh, I would probably stiffen up the preload a little bit for myself, uh, given the option, but for now it's fine. I don't know if I bought one of these bikes, I don't know that I would change it out, at least immediately. If I had a lot of miles on one, maybe. Um, but totally fine. Engine. Uh, great. It's It's got more than enough power. The power delivery is pretty linear. I had no issues just like throttling through the corners, rolling, th rolling on the throttle. Uh, no issues there. And sounds okay. I mean, it's got the little whistle noise, but when you really get on it, uh, the engine does sound pretty good. I, I won't lie. Um, does it sound like a GS engine, uh, that I really like personally? Not really, but that's more of like a tractor kind of sound and I don't know, people, people, uh, bitch about that noise. So that's totally a personal preference. That's kind of my opinion. Front wheel, that 21 inch front wheel versus a 19. I could totally live with it. I have no issues with that. I feel like that would probably make it so much better off-road. Along with the uh, suspension as well. You know, this is just the stereotypical Japanese uh, turn signal indicator thing, which I really don't like. I like the paddles of the GS, the, the BMW ones, which they got rid of anyway on the newer bikes. So if you're comparing a 2016 model uh, GS to this, you'd have the same issue. Yeah, controls are super easy to figure out. I didn't have to like, you know, some guy literally just showed me for like five minutes and I know how to do everything and it's not a big deal. I will say that uh, on a side note, having two tires is both a uh, asset and a liability. I mean, it's it's far harder to repair a little puncture like a, like a nail going through your tire. However, if you have like a serious blowout, you can definitely change out the tube on this easy and uh, keep running it. If you were on a BMW uh, with the uh, side pull spokes or whatever that allow for tubeless, uh, if you have a serious blowout on that, you're kind of screwed. So in that sense, as a full-on dual sport bike, it's, uh, I guess, if you want to call it a dual sport, um, 
definitely better in that regard, but also uh, way less convenient in terms of everything else. And uh, quite honestly, I feel like people get a lot more flats on, on tube tires than they do uh, tubeless. So, I mean, I kind of prefer a tubeless. Uh, riding position. I, uh, as I kind of mentioned earlier, it's, it's very uh, upright. I feel like I'm sitting inside a cockpit. No issues there, like it. Uh, pegs, kind of gross. Would change them out, can do that pretty cheap. Aftermarket accessories are abundant for this bike. Uh, it's a very popular bike, it's sold very well. So no issues there. Uh, power, I don't know if that's a standard thing, the 12 volt power thing there, but uh, pretty much essential when you're doing any navigation with your phone and uh, you run out of battery, so. So uh, if I'm gonna ride a lot off-road, buy this bike. If I'm gonna do a lot of long distance travel on the highway, buy the GS, it's that simple. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect. With that said, I maybe might prefer this over the GS, I won't lie. Uh, as soon as I start getting off-road with that GS, it's it's fun, but it's still, I feel like it could be a little more fun uh, if I had a, a little more nimble of a bike and something that soaked up the, the stuff a little better suspension wise. Should mention the transmission. Uh, transmission is totally fine. I had no issues really shifting uh, through gears. Definitely caught neutral uh, twice, I think, out of the whole day. Not a big deal. That's usually just my fault. It's a good bike. I, the transmission is totally fine. I don't personally think I would get a DCT. That's just me. Uh, this thing looks great. Sounds pretty good. Rides great. No issues. I would buy it. Now I can just gotta uh, see if there's a used one that's not uh, super expensive, because I don't want to get a new one and two years later the you know depreciates by what five grand. <laughs> just it's too much. As a side note, I would never buy these these uh, GV Trucker bags. They're kind of garbage. Uh, I'm sure their GV aluminum ones aren't aren't too bad, but I I haven't seen them before. Um, but these plastic ones with like the aluminum outer maybe are kind of gross. I don't like them at all. My apologies for the rather abrupt ending of this video, but my GoPro ran out of battery and I was a little late to return the bike. So I just wanted to kind of get back to W motorcycles and get that bike back to them in time. Uh, anyway, I'm going to have the next video explaining why I didn't end up buying the Africa Twin uh, show up over here. And so you can click that and get the actual conclusion of my bike search. Um, I wanted to break it into a separate video in case some of you don't have the time to watch a 50 minute plus video from a mediocre YouTuber like me. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching and ride safe out there.